The first step is to lay the harness out in the vehicle and route all the wires to where they need to go. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I've done here is I've just separated out all the wires that need to actually run into the engine bay. So we've got the crank and cam sensor, we've got the manifold pressure, TPS, air and coolant temperature sensors, and then of course the fuel and the ignition. Apart from that, everything else uh, is staying in the cabin. So let's go lay this out. Now with all the wires coming through the firewalls that are gonna come into the engine bay, I'm gonna route these wires into the engine bay and lay things out so that I can then cut them to length and terminate correctly. It's important to route your wires away from turbochargers and exhaust manifolds so that the wiring doesn't end up melting. So to make for a clean installation, one of the tips that I can give you is when we have two wires or even three wires in one particular circuit, in this case I've got the air temperature sensor, what I'm actually going to do is connect up a battery drill to the end of this wire and I'm actually going to twist all the wires together and then I'm going to heat shrink the whole wire. The reason I do this is A, it looks good uh, and B, it also helps to minimise the amount of electrical noise that you get on the circuit. When I'm doing this, I actually I'm going to heat shrink these two wires all the way back to the connection. Basically what that allows me to do is, is troubleshoot in the future. Rather than all the wires coming into one big clump, I've got one circuit going all the way back to the connector. That means I can simply look, am I having a problem with one circuit? Yes, I am. I can see the whole wire heat shrink together in one quick, easy look. We're at the point now where we actually need to put the connectors onto the wiring harness. It's important to note a couple of little tricks. The first one is with the air and coolant temp sensor, the wire has to actually feed through the connector before the pin gets crimped on there. Then you crimp the pin on and pull the pin back into the connector. Just one little tip that I've got there is we've actually created different separate breakout looms for both the injection and the ignition system here. The reason we do this is because these are the parts that are actually often upgraded in the vehicle. So if you put new injectors in with a different plug, you can actually just make a, a different breakout loom instead of having to rewire the whole vehicle. So that's one little tip. Uh, you'll also see that on the ignition system and on the injection system, we actually have the same series as plug. This is a, this is a Deutsch DT series connector. But so that we can't actually get it wrong and we put it back together, what we do is we put the male plug on the injection system and I put the female plug on the engine bay side of the ignition system. That means we just simply can't get them wrong. So whenever you're using the same series of connector, if you've got both six ways or five ways or four ways, if they're both in the engine bay, it's good to swap them around on the harness and the engine side so you cannot get them confused when you're putting it back in. Now that we've finished wiring up the engine bay, all we need to do is connect all the sensors once the sensors are all connected, we're actually going to go into the vehicle. We're going to connect up the power, the ground, and the ignition switch. And then we'll be able to go online with the ECU and actually set it up and start tuning. There you have it, we've wired up the engine bay, we've been into the cabin of the vehicle, we've actually connected the ECU, we've hooked up battery power and ground, we've also hooked up the ignition switch. So we've got it started, we've set the base timing, that was very important, engine start and run. So that pretty well completes the full installation of an ECU into a bare engine. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Technically Speaking and we'll see you next time.